uh, chat, the verse that I'm going to be preaching is usually avoided by most preachers. Um, so uh, basically what I'm going to do right now is uh, give it a shot. And I want you to look in your Bibles to Romans chapter 12. And I want you to look at verse 19 where it says, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Now, you know, um, God doesn't want to extract vengeance. It's a strange work that he does not enjoy. He, he, he takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. And when you see Mashiach hanging there on the tree, being abused, if you are the Zunfunder Eivishir, come down, come down, save yourself and save us. And uh, uh, spitting on him and uh, basically antagonizing him, making the pain even greater. Uh, uh, of course, he was already strung up naked in a public place in a thoroughfare where people were walking by, but that wasn't enough. Now, he endured this, and what did he say? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Uh, but what you have to understand is that it's appointed unto men once to die, and then the judgment. So God's, God's patience will one day run out. Uh, and when you get to Romans chapter 9, Verse 22, it says, what if God, uh, in the Orthodox Jewish Bible, there's a word, naniach, it means supposing. What if supposing God wanting to show his wrath and to make his power known, uh, endured with, with great uh, uh, patience, with long suffering, uh, the the vessels of wrath prepared for destruction. You say vessels of wrath prepared for destruction. Wow, uh, what what kind of uh, God would would even have a world where there would be vessels of wrath? These are not uh, vessels uh, that are. Uh, fitted for mercy or for grace. These are not uh, vessels for honorable use. These are vessels for dishonorable use. Uh, these are the uh, bedpans, if you will, not the champagne goblets. So uh, what kind of God would even have a world which would have such vessels? Well, let me, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, many of you know that uh, right now I'm my wife's caregiver, and uh, uh, she uh, is 99% uh, recovered from a stroke, but she still needs care, and that's what I do. I, I oversee her medication, make sure that she takes it on, on time, and do a, a thousand other things. Last night, I... I cooked a steak dinner. I'm doing a lot of things I didn't even know I could do. Uh, so I'm her cook, her chauffeur, her gopher, her, her caregiver, uh, and everything. Uh, now, this is uh, not an accident. God, God was testing me, and this was part of my making my calling and election sure with God. Because if I had been my grandfather, let me tell you what, what would have happened. Are you listening? If everybody's listening, give me a thumbs up. I want to tell you what my grandfather would have done in this situation because he was a, an alcoholic. He was a violent man. He had a sawed-off shotgun. My mother almost starved to death. There was no food in the house. Uh, uh, his wife got sick. She, she was literally thrown out of the house. 
She was told, get out. Uh, he was a whoremonger. He went to a, a house of ill repute three times a week uh, in the truck downstairs while he was up in the uh, house of ill repute were my mother and her older sister. They waited for hours and hours and hours for daddy to come down. This happened not once, not twice, but three times a week, three times a week. The sheriff was afraid to come out to the shanty shack because he had a shotgun and he was known to be a violent man. Not only that, that he was an extremely intelligent man and he had a lot of money because he had a very good job. But he used his money for two things, whiskey and prostitutes. And he had absolutely no care in the world about whether my mother would live or die. And so this is how my mother grew up. And when she married a nominal believer and she was able to go to the house of God and hear preaching, she drank it in with great gusto and immediately became a believer. And then when time came for me to become a believer, she did everything necessary for me to hear the gospel. She sold her house. She sold her furniture. She put my father in the car. She drove to Beverly Hills. She found a good congregation where the preacher was a good preacher. She dragged me there. And of course, I went only because of my father. He had, had paranoia, schizophrenia. And I said, well, maybe it'll help him, but I'm an atheist. Anyway, long story short, they're sitting on either side of me. The tears are rolling down, and I become gloriously saved. The man is a good friend of, of the man who would become my mentor. Uh, his name was Donald McGavern. Who, uh, he edited all my books. And all, that ha all he had to do was pick up the phone and call and say, Donald, I got a boy here. I want to send him over to the seminary. And that was it. So you see, it was all prepared by God. But I want you to know something. This vessel of wrath was prepared for destruction. And so would I be. If I told Linda, look, uh, look, I need the apartment now. You're sick. Get on outside. We know a, a girl named Margaret. Her brother threw her out of the apartment. She had to sleep in the emergency rooms until she dropped dead of a heart attack. He literally threw her out. That's what I would do. Throw out Linda get my booze, get my, uh, uh, my needs met, you know, if I, I don't want to draw you a picture, I get my whiskey in here. Uh, if I was a true son of my grandfather, that's what I would do. But you see, the only reason I'm not is because I'm a vessel of free grace. If you think that any works that I ever did deserve this, you don't understand the gospel at all. Why does God put up with one vessel and then have another vessel to show his free grace? This is his sovereignty. This is his uh, prerogative. Uh, you say, it's not fair. Well, let me ask you something. In what sense was God unfair to my grandfather? Can you answer that question? In what sense was he unfair to him? He bore... He carried nas, nas, naseh in uh, Hebrew. He carried with great long suffering, with uh, orek ruach, with, with long suffering and patience. He put up with this guy who lived to a very ripe old age, into his 80s, this whoremonger, this violent drunkard, this wicked man. God put up with him. He endured him. He carried him, just like Moshiach carried you. You say, when did he carry you? When he was carrying that tree on his back, that accursed tree that he was going to die, uh, die on. This was you he was carrying. 
You are my grandfather, my friend. This is the hateful thing that people don't want to hear. You are a filthy, wicked sinner, and you're going to burn in hell. And the only reason you're not is because of what he did. He said, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why hast thou forsaken me? He took your hell for you. He even took my grandfather's hell. He died for everybody. He even died for him. And he endured him. He put up with him. He put up with him. Against thee, the only, have I sinned and done that which is evil in thy sight. Created me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Uh, cast me not away from thy presence. David said, this is hell, to be cast away from God's presence. My grandfather, I'm almost certain, was cast away from God's presence. He was cast away. He was cast away. And when I was nine years old, the Lord took me out there, and I met this man. And I stood by a dirty tree, and the Lord said, this man is in you. And when you reach a certain age, you will be this man. And when I got drunk the first time, I knew it wasn't long before I knew that I was my grandfather. You see, we are all children of Grandfather Adam, and we are fallen, accursed people. We need a new Adam. And that new Adam, when he was in the garden, said, not my will, but thine be done. And he obeyed. Hallelujah. And there are two gardens. And I pray that each one of us will go to the Gan Eden, the Garden of Eden Paradise. He said, today to the Gan of, today you will be with me in Gan Eden. So I want you to look at this scripture. And let's see if we can understand it now, having preached this. It says, Romans chapter 9, verse 22, what if God, wanting to show his wrath, oh yes, he will show his wrath, he will show his burning anger, vengeance is mine, I will repay, he will repay, he will repay, he will repay, Stalin will be repaid, Hitler will be repaid, and so will my grandfather. They will be repaid. Unfortunately, I don't take any joy in this. It's a horrendous thing. It's a hard doctrine. Who can, who can preach these things? Uh, but it says, and if he wants to do this and he wants to make his power known, yes, he has power and he wants to make it known. And he, it will be known. Uh, because uh, uh, your sins will find you out. Yes, uh, nothing can be hid from the Lord. What you do behind closed doors will be shouted from the rooftop. It says, what if he endured? What if he carried? What if he bore? What if he, uh, what if he put up with? What if he actually uh, held up with much long suffering? Can you imagine this, this man lived to be uh, something like uh, 86 or 87 years old? Can you imagine when my mother, my, my, my mother who was just a little baby, when she was in this filthy shack and she opened the refrigerator and there was nothing in it but booze and nothing for her to eat? And her mother, she would cry for her mother. She would pine for her mother. Wayne knows about that. And where was her mother? Her mother was about six blocks down the street in another house where he had thrown her out. And she was dying of ovarian cancer. And he didn't want her in the house. He threw her out. My mother wanted to go see her own mother and couldn't, wasn't allowed to walk those six blocks. And God was watching this and he was putting up with it. He was enduring it. He was enduring it with great long suffering, but his wrath was building and getting ready to flare out. And this wrath will flare out in the, in the end against all evildoers. And what does it say here? It says, uh, with much long suffering endured the vessels of wrath 
prepared for destruction. Prepared for destruction. So you're going to be one kind of vessel or the, or the other. There's no third kind. There's no third type of vessel. There's either the vessel prepared for destruction. Uh, here, you know, if you go to uh, Bible Hub, you'll see the Orthodox Jewish Bible, but you'll also see the Orthodox Hebrew Bible. And, uh, uh, and, and when you get to verse 22, you will see av avadon. Avadon is the word for uh, destruction. Avadon. Avadon. Prepared for avadon. Prepared for Avadon. Listen, when I was at Indiana University, I was 18 years old. I was in the Ballantine Hall. It was the summer of 1961. I was wearing jeans and a t-shirt. The instructor was a graduate assistant. All of us had our little paperback copy of the Iliad and the Odyssey. The uh, epic in uh, original language was Greek. I had it in English. And uh, the instructor was wearing a checked gray and white uh, uh, summer sport coat, white shirt without a tie, jeans, and tennis shoes. He looked very chic. He was about four years older than me, about 22 years old. And so here we were. We're going to start studying the Iliad and the Odyssey, the epic poem by Homer. And he looks out at us. He puts his leg up on the chair. I can remember this like it was yesterday. I have almost a photographic picture of this in my mind. He said, I just uh, am curious, how many of you out there, we were all about 18 years old, how many of you out there believe in God? Would you raise your hands? I raised my hand. He looked around, he said, okay. Well, by the end of this summer course, you will not believe in God. Now, what this guy didn't know, because I'm sure he hadn't read it in the Greek, is there's one point in the Iliad and the Odyssey where Zeus says that he's going to throw somebody in Tartarus. Tartarus. And when you take your Bible and you look at 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, right before Peter, right before Kepha is martyred, he uses their word. The Greeks had a word for hell. He doesn't use a Hebrew word. He uses a Greek word. He uses the word Tartarus because they knew that word and it was in their vocabulary and it was the word for hell. If my Baptist pastor had walked into that room, I guess he would have had to drive up there a hundred miles for my hometown, I'm sure they wouldn't have let him speak. But let's say, uh, for the sake of it, supposing you have that idea in uh, Romans 9:22. Supposing my my pastor had come in there and said, "Wait a minute, young man, you're 22 years old. Uh, I've been preaching to this boy right here, this Phil Goble, for 18 years, and you." have determined that you are going to undermine everything I've done for the last 18 years. I have a question for you, young man. By what warrant or by what authority, uh, uh, let me just put it like this. Who, who made you the expert on these things? Who made you the expert about whether or not there is a God? Uh, Kepa did signs and wonders. He did miracles. There was a man who was born lame, who was leaping and jumping and praising God. The first time he preached, uh, I guess it was glossolalia. It was uh, probably Latin or something, he, a language he couldn't know. He actually preached in a language he didn't know. How are you, how are you going to be able to do that? All these signs and wonders that Kepha did before he sealed his testimony with martyrdom is our way of knowing that this really is the Bible. And if it really says there is a Gehinom, it really means it. And there is, in fact, a Gehinom. Yes, the Esh Olam is there. It actually exists. 
and there's nothing you could say to undermine that because you don't speak in you can't speak in in a language you don't know you can't heal a man uh, born lame and make him leap like a ballet dancer you can't do any of the things that Kipa did so who why should anybody listen to you and so what i'm trying to tell you today friend is vengeance is mine and i shall repay saith the lord and god's god's wrath is brewing and building against a wicked world and he has carried this wicked world for a long time and when he sent the zunfunder oibister to carry the sins of this world he endured with great long suffering the the jeers and all all of the uh, agony and all the rejection to fulfill the scriptures about Moshiach must suffer and after that come to his glory. But there is a day coming when this will be over and when his wrath, his holy wrath will be unleashed. And I'm praying right now and I would like to invite all of you to pray. You know, I was not, I was, I was not a believer when this happened. I was 18 years old. It was going to be almost another 10 years before I, become, I would become a believer. So if, I, if, if, if somebody had come in there, as they, as they have, you know, on campuses, you have these campus shootings. If somebody had come in there with a gun and shot me and shot this uh, graduate assistant, this 22-year-old, we would both be in Gehinom forever. But in the mercy of God, he allowed me to live another 10 years and become born again. And then about 40 years later, many signs and wonders actually happened in the ministry here to, uh, to thwart the persecutors. So some of the things that Kipa did, for instance, falling into a trance on the roof of Simon the Tanner in Jaffa. Those kind of things happen at Beth Shalom to ward off the persecutors. So I, I, I live to see some of these glorious things that God can do. But oh, hallelujah, I want to keep myself in the love of God, friend. I want to remain a vessel of mercy. Hanina. Not, uh, uh, not a vessel of wrath. I want, to, I want to keep myself in the love of God. Would you pray with me right now? Just pray these words. Dear God, say it with me. Dear God, thank you for Abraham, uh, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Thank you, God, the true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that you have put up with me this long and all my sins. And I, I want to come before you with conviction and with a contrite heart right now. And I want to ask you to forgive my sins. Hallelujah. I am a sinner. I admit it. Would you say that with me? I am a sinner. I admit I'm a sinner. And I need a Savior. And there's no other Savior. There's no other name under heaven whereby I must be saved. And I want to thank you that you sent the Zunpunder Oibishter to take and make the Kapura for me. Uh, someone who did not deserve it in your great mercy oh God have mercy upon me a sinner come into my life take control of my life help me Lord to move away from the evil of my past years and to walk in the newness of life and to cling to these inerrant holy scriptures and to hold them dear to my heart every day, every hour, and walk with you all the way to glory as a vessel of free grace prepared for salvation. Because I could have been a vessel of wrath prepared for destruction so i want to give you the glory today for romans chapter 9 verse 22 and i want to ask you lord to hold back your vengeance your righteous judgment 
In wrath, remember mercy. Give us some time, Lord, to preach the gospel to a wicked world before it's too late for this world. And we'll give you the praise. And everyone said,